And when we talk to people, we can either talk in words or the only other way we have of thinking is images. And we've spent decades trying to talk in words, but very little research on images, despite the fact that images evolutionary arose way prior to words and pack an incredible punch. A picture says a thousand words. And if we think about our local mountain here and the first ascent, I just want you to look at the quote in purple, because that's a bit of an image on the descent when it went wrong. Um, and what we notice in these split seconds where we're trying to learn from information is exactly that. It's usually about movement uh, and space and motion and colour. It's very little about words or cognition. It, it's just moments that are very, very perceptual. And they sort of need to be, because you've got to learn from these moments really quickly. And what the brain's sort of been built to do is extract really useful bits of perceptual information from the environment, replay them again like a high-speed warning signal, so that when you're in a similar situation, it will override deliberately any of that cortex cognition and try and give you that perceptual and emotional information. And the way it does that is it just picks up an environmental cue. So if you're in a car crash with a red car and you're in London, you might find that a red post box triggers flashbacks of red car. So it's simple, very perceptual level cues outside our conscious awareness. And the reason we call intrusive memories intrusive is that, well, they're unwanted, but they're also a really interesting aspect of human memory. It's involuntary memory, memory that occurs against our will. And if you think back to literature, the iconic moment is Marcel Proust eating his madeleine, and then suddenly all the childhood memories come back. Now, that's fine when it's a lovely memory or something useful, but it's less fine when the content of that memory could distract us.